welcome everybody. And uh, this is very important event, very meaningful event to remember and to commemorate the life the contributions of our good friend, our fellow comrade, you know, Musak um, Koji San. And, uh, and uh, it's a good turnout that we have today. And uh, my relationship with Musak Koji uh, since there is basically through Arena. Hmm. You know, and uh, he epitomized not just himself as a scholar activist. I think you all, all of us, many of us are in that tradition of scholar activists. You know, we believe in good scholarship, but we also believe scholarship is not confined to the ivory tower. It has to go out to society. We are obliged to actually transfer our knowledge, use our knowledge for, you know, uh, the betterment of society. And I think our friend, our sincere, you know, actually represented that tradition about the scholar activist who doesn't sit in the ivory tower. He comes out, he handles society, he goes out and tries to do better this, this whole country, this whole society that we live in. And uh, it's been my great pleasure to have interacted with him uh, through various capacities uh, during uh, my time in arena with him. Let me just share a few slides to give you an idea about uh, his background. Um, but I just want to say that actually, I don't want to go into his academic background because he was a very good academic. You know, he started off in Sofia University um, and uh, taught international relations. He actually was one of the pioneers of the field of peace studies. And his friend called Kevin Clements wrote that even before they, you know, uh, designed a whole field of study called peace studies, there were people like him, the Elise and Kenneth Boulding, his good friends, and Gao Tung. They were all talking about this kind of studies that the whole universities should begin to focus on. So I don't want to go into that whole area. We know that he spent a lot of time, he made a lot of contributions towards the UN, uh, UNU, which is based in Nagoya. And, uh, you know, uh, it was our, our privilege to actually invite him to join ARENA when he was still vice rector. And now and then he made funds available to us. Now and then he invited us to participate and share with some of these activities. And uh, personally, for me, one of the important, very inspiring things about uh, our friend was that uh, I come from, you know, in uh, Malaysia, next door is Indonesia, and the whole Bandung conference was held in 1954 yeah. then. And Musakoji-san was always telling us, Bandung spirit, Bandung yeah. spirit, Bandung spirit. Yeah. You know, and he wanted us to rebuild this coalition of the developing third world, you know, countries and all that, which didn't want to get embroiled in the debates, fights between the superpowers. And he thought that this non-alignment movement was extremely good. Yeah. And in the last SS, uh, our number eight or nine, the, you know, and there's the, we, in a sense, we ended with this team. We have to rebuild this non-aligned gathering in the world, you know, as we actually go into this second round of the Cold War. So it is, you know, a message that Musako Ji-san shared with us from very, very early on. We kept reminding people like us, hey, are you all celebrating 1954? It's 50 years now, 2004. You know, so we have to prepare to do something about this. Okay, so that's all I have to say now. I just want to share a few slides. Yeah, so born 1929, died, and you know this um, next slide is, uh, just want to show... So I got this some of these pictures. I went through the old issue of Arena, you know, and you all will remember we had this very special issue when we were trying to reflect on how do we move forward. So Mushako Jisan was part of this process, looking back, looking forward, envisioning the new roles that we had to play as the as the as the world moved into the twenty first century, and uh, of all of us were involved in that, but he and he himself as well. So I just stole some pictures from this, uh, this uh, volume that was... So this was... Uh, I met him first for the first time in the Arena Congress in Penang. That was in April 2003. Look for yourself inside there, but in the middle you can see, looking, sitting very distinguished there, is mm -hmm. our friend, Musha Koji-san. 
you know, and uh, in the middle, can you see him? Yeah, this is Mushakoji. And so this was, uh, we held this conference and this was the first time I got involved with Aliran and I was very intrigued by this man uh, who was, you know, generally, as you know, he's a bigger size than many of us. Uh, he spoke very distinguishedly, you know, and, you know, I, you learn that very quickly that he can speak all languages, you know, and he had good devil in Mandarin as well. And, uh, but of course, he was Japanese speaker, French speaker, you know, Spanish speaker. And, you know, and so this was the man here. And uh, so we enjoyed, we had this great meeting we had uh, with him. Um, next slide. And in Penang, um, it was a big celebration. This was one of the biggest, one of the bigger congresses. Uh, we had a lot of money then, you know, so we could bring a lot of people together. But I've discovered that he was already there in one of the earlier congresses in, that was held in Seoul. And I understand that Arena was started in 1984 or so. You know, with Lawrence Surendra, you know, a few of these founder members, like Kinchi was one of the founder members. And so I this that's a history that I'm not familiar with. But Mushako Jisan was mm. part of this from about 1990s on. You know, and so he is uh, this is a uh, Jungo, are you in this picture? You must be somewhere here, huh? And then this is Arif Budiman who passed away. That's Kinchi, you know, and then also passed away our friend, you know, uh Vinod. You know, some of us have got uh, Johan Saravanamutu, uh, who invited me into uh, Arena. So this is a very important picture from that period. And then I had the privilege to work with him in this workshop on war militarism and a peace program, which was this meeting was held in Colombo in 2004. Uh, some of us are, oh, he's not in this picture. <laughs> we blocked him out. Uh, Okay, so he's there at the back there. And I, I get, you know, and uh, we took this picture. This man who was with us, uh, this is, uh, uh, what's his name now? He's from Indonesia. He has become the Secretary General of the Ministry of Culture. He's a leftist, you know, but it's the, to the credit of Jokowi, the very open government that he runs. Um, this man is now in there and he wrote a very important thesis on Pramudia Anantatur and uh, his book and so he's there okay so this is the book that we came out with and I dare say that it's a very important book because we talked about not the military in the traditional sense but about the militarization of the state and of even the society and its culture and so we have to be very weary be watchful about how they actually uh, penetrate into our daily lives. Subsequently, I had the privilege to work with Musha Koji-san uh, when he was together with Jung Ok. Jung Ok and Musha Koji-san uh, were the co-chairs of the Arena Board from 2009, 2011, I think. You know, and uh, so I had the privilege to work with them. And Mo uh, Yudin, Neng, Cynthia Yuan, Francis Lowe and Francis Lee, we were in the board together. And Francis Lee was our coordinator. And this was a very interesting time when we made this transition from Hong Kong to Seoul. So this was the office that we opened in Seoul. And Jung Ok, this you remember, she would always look for nice apartments for us to go and stay when we had our meetings. And this was, I think, in the YMCA or, you know, something, uh, one of those places. And then... Uh, this, uh, our program, however, was based in Sung Kong Ho University in Seoul. Uh, although the origin, the place of registration remained in Hong Kong, but we operated from a new place. A period of democratic ferment in Korea. Part of the reason why we relocated there was because uh, we wanted to get that spirit, you know, that influence from what was happening in Korea. Uh, and also they had a lot of foundations, which had a lot of money at that point in time. Uh, the military regime had just been kicked out. And so there was money and uh, the May 18th Foundation would sponsor some of the meetings in Seoul. And, you know, we would that would help to pay our way to organize our meetings and our functions in Seoul. Uh, May 18th, uh, Korea Democratic Foundation. And Jung Ok was, of course, a very important part of all these organizations. Mushakoji-san was also there. 
one of the things that we began to do here was talk about regional security. And he always talked about how security has to be based, it has to be a common security. It's not you know, security for NATO versus for Russia. No, no, no. It has to be a common process of securitizing for everybody. You know, no division of security. No, it's a common security. And that was the period when this whole notion of truth and reconciliation was coming to the fore as a result of Mandela in South Africa. So for him, common security based on truth and reconciliation, in a sense that you might have fought against one another, killed one another, forget about that. We face and move forward together. So I thought that that was a very beautiful idea. I'm not an international relations person, but he used a lot of things about how personal relationships should be handled. And he projected this onto the world stage, you know, even into a field like you know, uh, international relations. And this was his notion of peace, a peace that was actually built on human solidarity. You know, how we should have compassion for one another. We should have truth and reconciliation, you know, binding us together. And he wanted that to be projected into the larger world, the world at large. So this group that we worked with, or the other thing about Mushu Koji San, during this period of time, uh, together with Jung Ok, Jung Ok might elaborate on this later on, uh, they launched this MMIA program, Marriage uh, Migrant mig uh, marriage migrants in Asia program. So our friend Mushakoji San was extremely interested in also how you know there were people being translocated from one place to another and so on and so forth. You know to marry. So you know the, and I remember Jung Ok organized for us to go and visit you know some of these uh, situations in the rural area. Finally, this group of ours uh, ended our our activities in the Congress that was held in Bangkok in 2011. Later on, I had another chance to interact with him when there was this mini Congress that was held in Penang. This was a period when we had run out of money. There was no money anymore for Arena. So we had to do things on the small scale. And very few of us would be able to afford to come together for these meetings. Well, of course, you know, um, Mushakoji san, Muto san, Li Jun Ok, you know, Lai, Lai, Lai Siong, and of course Kichi and all that. And the old diehards in Penang, myself and Andrew Perry and all that, we all get together. This was the period when, you know, there's the evidence that they began to do these interviews with Muto san and with, of course, you know, uh, two distinguished Japanese scholar activists, you know, in the arena tradition. So this was in 2015 in Penang. So this was the meeting that we held and the filming that was taking place. Uh, and then we had the pleasure of actually uh, uh, the present chief minister of Penang, Ramasami, who was an old fellow, no longer active, but once upon a time he was. So he invited us, you know, he threw a party for us and uh, we caught up with him. And, uh, you know, and of course, Suri Chai was also around. And, uh, you know, of course, Margaret uh, and uh, uh, Ed and uh, um, Ed and yeah, uh, Tessa, yeah. Okay, um, this is one of my last slides, and then there was another recently. I, oh, this was my last meeting, this important meeting uh, in Arena, a mini Arena Congress. We finished in very couple, one and a half days or something like that. And then, but the main occasion was the South South Forum number four in Lingnan University in 2017. This was a time when actually uh, tensions were building up on the peninsula. The silly man called Trump was in power in Washington, and uh, you know another silly man was firing his rockets. And the two of them wanted to start fighting with one another, and they used very acerbic, very dangerous language. And which only you know made the temperature go higher and higher. And we were on the brink of war, I remember, as we were there. And the people very concerned who came from you know the region in East Asia, they're concerned that actually if anything gets shot, you know, they they release any nuclear bomb or whatever, the whole region will be annihilated and everybody would suffer something. So this group of 
very distinguished gentlemen, including Samuel, you know, and then the Chinese and you know Japanese and these two people, they were all motivating us to sign this document and they issue a very important document telling people to go back to this notion of peace, which is a common security, you know, based on truth and reconciliation and concern for each other. So with that, I want to end this introduction. Um, so um, I think we want to show a very quick video, about 10 minutes, uh, which Kim Chi and uh, Lai Xiong and all that in Hong Kong have put together for us to enjoy. In uh, 1976, I became uh, vice rector of the UN University, and uh, that was uh, my second uh, kind of uh, uh, contact with uh, various uh, uh, action-oriented researchers. Uh, and uh, which uh, became the reason I'm here now. Arena <laughs> was part of, uh, for me, it was part of uh, my activities uh, at the United Nations University. Uh, if uh, you allow me to uh, just mention uh, generally uh, the uh, nature of uh, my work, there. Um, in the, the uh, uh, United Nations, um, UTANT has played a very important role, but uh, actually, unfortunately, the, the West uh, did not appreciate what uh, UTANT was doing in the rest of the world. And this is where uh, he organized uh, economic commissions in different uh, regions. Uh, he started uh, all these global uh, issue conferences with uh, ecology, with uh, population, with uh, women and others. That was uh, all his own, his, his ideas. But his uh, other idea, which was uh, completely sabotaged, was uh, the UN University. Um, uh, Utan uh, was very much interested in the upsurge of university students.
Koji is well known among us. Uh, he's, a pro, uh, he's currently professor by a Special Appointment Center for Asia Pacific Partnership and Osaka University of Economics and Law. He is the Vice President of the Yamada International Movement Against All Forms of Discrimination and Racism. He is of the Red Network, uh, the Radical Ecological Democracy Network, and um, Central Japan ESD, that is the Education for Sustainable Development, uh, the Regional Center of Expertise. Uh, he is also the former rector of the United Nations University. And we are very glad uh, to have uh, Professor Musha Koji with us today. So, Professor Musha Koji. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you for your introduction, which is uh, too elogious. But uh, anyway, uh, I would uh, like to uh, tell you briefly uh, about uh, things, maybe three or four points. Uh, the first is that the uh, discussion we could have uh, the day before yesterday and yesterday, but uh, especially yesterday, uh, with the, the lack of time, uh, we could not uh, go in depth into all the very in important and interesting reports. And, but uh, I would like just to summarize by saying that ARENA's uh, uh, linkage between research and practice uh, has been uh, eloquently uh, voiced out by all the presentations and uh, that was the, uh, the first point I would like to uh, point out, that we should uh, follow that trend. Uh, but the problem when we are in a diversity situation is that it is very important also to link the various uh, uh, themes and uh, activities and uh, the networking is uh, uh, what I think uh, we should at least, at last, uh, this at last uh, moment, we have to uh, go to discuss the networking of uh, uh, ARENA. Uh, this is uh, uh, my first point. Uh, the second uh, point, uh, which uh, I was very much interested in, uh, is that there was uh, an emphasis on different uh, civilizational aspects uh, of the present uh, crisis. I would like to mention that it is very important for me to come to this South-South Forum because I'm not unfortunately from the south. Uh, Japan moved from the south to the north and uh, I for formally apologize for that mistake. I would just like to tell you about the uh, nuclear and war threats come all from the west. We have to overcome uh, west Falian state systems, the states should not remain uh, the legal killers. The states should become non-killing. To build non-killing states is what is very urgently needed now. This is where we need to build a world without uh, atomic bomb or atomic energy also but also have a total and general disarmament. And so this is uh, now what is important is for the people to be for a non-killing state system. And uh, actually the non-killing state system uh, will uh, be built uh, when uh, we will be able to develop 
in Asia are, no, or, uh, are more pl pluralistic world order than the one which exists now under global um, uh, globalization. And uh, we need there to uh, come back to all our uh, Asian and non-Asian traditions of uh, non-violence and of uh, having a world uh, based on the right of all the peoples to live in peace. Thank you very much, Kinchi. Um, I'd like to recognize the Namaka is with us now, and also many other people have since joined us. And one of the first people who has to go for another important meeting is, of course, Samuel Lee. And we'll invite now Samuel to say a few words before he leaves. You know, um, Samuel, please. Thank you, Francis. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Uh, I appreciate very much uh, that Arena, uh, Kinsey, and uh, uh, Francis uh, have facilitated this wonderful and very precious opportunity uh, to remember uh, our love, beloved friends, and uh, <clears throat> Uh, teachers, uh, Dr. Mushakoji Kinaide, and also this wonderful opportunity to see the face of our old friends uh, in Arena. So uh, many, uh, so many participants whom we have not uh, met and seen a long time. Uh, well, I. Uh, I just wanted to say some uh, some uh, memory of uh, 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 our uh, professor Kinaide, uh, 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 Kinaide. The first time I I have met him was uh, not in Arena. It was before that Arena, as he was uh, the vice rector of uh, United Nations University. Uh, in 1987, uh, I think he was still at the time vice rector. Uh, he and uh, Professor Mush uh, uh, Sakamoto together have organized uh, in the name of uh, UNU the, on uh, East Asian uh, peaceful community and uh, common security. And uh, uh, he has organized one uh, session on spec uh, specifically on the problem of the peace and unification of Korea. And he has invited from North Korea uh, the famous uh, uh, Mr. Hwang jang yup who was a long time president of the Kim Il-sung University. And at the time he was uh, uh, Secretary of uh, Foreign Affairs in the Labour Party in North Korea. And on the other side, uh, uh, he has invited me uh, from South Korea. So it was a wonderful opportunity for me to meet for the first time to meet a North Korean and also very famous, uh, respectful uh, man like Fang jang yup You know, until at that time, uh, the South Korean uh, was forbidden to meet any North Korean uh, illegally. Uh, even, uh, even, uh, even the government people did not have contact with North Korea. And uh, uh, if, if uh, South Korea uh, meet the North Korean without the permission, then uh, he must be punished uh, very, very, very hardly. In, uh, but uh, I could uh, come to Yokohama uh, to this conference, uh, which uh, uh, Mr. sang has organized, uh, because it was a UNU uh, of UNU uh, United Nations uh, University uh, conference. Uh, so we 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 could stay three days in Yokohama in same hotel, and right near the room. I had a wonderful opportunity to have long talk with him. 
of course, in the conference, uh, the both of us have uh, uh, spoken uh, about a peaceful uh, way of uh, uh, common security in, in North and South Korea and to avoid the war and then also peace agreement. Uh, uh, we will, uh, Professor Fang Zhang Yap and I uh, have a very good agreement on, on many issues. So, Musha Koji-san and uh, Professor Sakamoto were very surprised to see that the, how uh, these two uh, uh, very hostile <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, countries from South and North Korea could have so much reconciliatory discussions. Uh, it has given me also a wonderful opportunity to uh, get to know more about North Korea. And I think that was uh, one of the reasons and, uh, 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 and uh, maybe some, uh, uh, some ground uh, how Fang Jiang Yap has decided to make political exile. Uh, a few years later, he came to South Korea and as a like, political exile, you know all of that. And then uh, I think in the 1990s on, uh, we could meet uh, in Arena. Uh, I, I remember 1997, as I have organ, organized that ARENA conference in, in Songshi University, uh, so he could come. And then since then, uh, we had very good uh, talks and relationships. And then uh, I served uh, also as, as a president of the uh, Korea History NGO Conference, History NGO uh, Forum. Uh, for the peace uh, in East Asia, in, in Korea. It's one, one of the uh, uh, civil society NGOs. And uh, uh, we, uh, we, we, we had annual conference, uh, international conference inviting many uh, uh, foreign uh, uh, scholars and experts on the peace issues. Uh, I think we have invited him uh, twice as main speaker, uh, Jacques Bojisang, and to talk and discuss about the problem of, of uh, East Asia and then also regarding the North Korea. He, he has already uh, brought uh, very uh, positive uh, informations and uh, lectures uh, regarding the reconciliation and uh, uh, peaceful community uh, and dialogue between North and South Korea. Uh, we have invited also Muto Sang also uh, once uh, as uh, the main speaker for this conference. Uh, so uh, we have just seen the, uh, the our conference arena conference in uh, Penang and also in South South Forum in Hong Kong. Uh, so today, I am really uh, uh, admiring uh, Musa Kodisang uh, and have a very uh, wonderful and precious uh, remembrance uh, of him. And uh, we will all wish him uh, a happiness in heavenly life. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I wish uh, you all our friends of ARENA uh, uh, to have wonderful uh, memory discussions today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Samuel, for sharing with us very precious moments and uh, that building up, you know, especially between the North and the South through, you know, uh, Musako Jisan. I would like to uh, invite Nirmaka to, uh, Nirmal, uh, Nirmalka to say a few words and then to take over the rest of the meeting. You know, I'm on standby. Over to you, Nirmalka. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry that I joined a bit late. I am some technical hitcher, so I, I am not a, a technically savvy person. Uh, so uh, uh, thank you uh, for Francis for uh, being there. And I hope you will be with me because uh, uh, we'll co-moderate. Uh, it's uh, my memory of uh, Musha Ji, as I call him. It's like million memories. I don't know from where to begin and where to end because most of you know that uh, after Arena, 
uh, Mushaji and I worked in the in Imada, in the International Movement Against All Forms of Discrimination and Racism since 1992, till he passed away. Uh, it is like, you know, uh, so apart from being in the uh, arena, uh, PP21 and other forums, uh, we were together as uh, once he was uh, a chairperson, I was a director. Then after that, I was a chairperson. Uh, he was a director, uh, he was a secretary general. Then subsequently, both of us were vice, vice chair. Uh, then at another time we became the uh, so my life in Nimada, uh, Professor Mushaji or Mushaji never allowed my life in Nimada to end. There was always a constitutional reform uh, to 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 keep me in. Uh, I always said it is like uh, uh, reforming the Sri Lankan constitution for the president of the country to remain in power forever and ever. So it was like uh, so he was he was. Though I, though we were like uh, in terms of generations, you know, generational gap age-wise, but for me, uh, he and I were equals in terms of uh, in in in, uh, in uh, working together in Imada. Now, my my my, I I really want to say that uh, I can't remember how I first met uh, Professor Musha, but I definitely know. It was when I was in the Christian Conference of Asia as a youth, uh, and there was this discussion about that the church is not linking to the social movement. And we came from the radical uh, trade union, left oriented uh, student movements. Uh, we had what is called the urban rural mission. Um, Matthew uh, Koshi, Matthew George, or you know, Nainan Koshi. Uh, Nainan Koshi was then the secretary. Nainan Koshi and Professor Musakoji had links in the ecumenical world. So they found some money. I remember, I think it cost us only like $3,000. They found and we met in, uh, in arena, almost like a conspiracy to start this academic activist and social movement plus Christian leaders dialogue uh, to see how we could influence the churches in Asia to interact with uh, those of other religions, but those who are working in social movements. Uh, that came from the South Asia region because we as Christians had to deal with uh, other those of other, other religions as student activists from Buddhist background, from Hindu background, not only Christians. So in the left movement, we had this uh, a a secularist approach. So in the CCA, we were never in, we were never allowed, or there was no way that we could invite our Buddhist and Hindu activists to participate in regional meetings. And I remember people like Kaman Sita in the Philippines, myself. Uh, we we met uh, with Nainan Koshi's um, uh, Nainan Koshi's support and Professor Mushakoji. I met Professor Mushakoji first in that discussion where we decided to uh, establish a, a, an initiative called arena and the word arena i remember how we used to uh, we used to uh, look at the dictionaries uh, we used to look at uh, all kinds of uh, you know uh, these things we say arena is the place where in the old uh, greek uh, um, civilization where they fought uh, the arena where ideas clashed uh, and ideas clashed and you know uh, that that terminology and then we re I remember laboriously how we coined Asia Regional Exchange for New Alternatives and I and I I'm I, I'm sure I mean I I, I uh, Professor Musakoji was uh, was there the the living uh, the living uh, uh, living reality for us. So from that time onwards, uh, we, we worked together. I remember in somewhere in 1993 in Vienna, then I moved on to Asia Pacific Women Law and Development. I remember how Professor Musakoji came in search of me when I was in Vienna. Uh, in Vienna uh, telling me we need an Asian woman to be in Imada is so much dominated by the Japanese and not only Japanese, but Japanese men 
right? And it was a very male dominated organization. We need a South Asian uh, person. Please join us in Nimada. And, you know, I was introduced to the first, uh, uh, first forum in 1993 in Vienna when I spoke about the migrant workers. And from 1993 onwards, uh, I became a director of, of Imada and then I continued uh, to play the role. He was, a, he was to me a, a brother, I would say, a father at times when I had my personal problems to, to speak with him and also a mentor to my son uh, who subsequently, who is now, who is now in the foreign uh, he is now a political officer in the Swedish mission. And I remember how Professor Musakoji uh, insisted that he should study international affairs uh, for his, uh, for his uh, studies. So there was this very loving and very, uh, very uh, uh, family, uh, family, uh, family uh, links. All of you spoke about his ideas, ideas of globalization to be able to, what I appreciated in him was the fact that uh, his consistency with regard to globalization and the hegemonizing world, uh, his consistency with regard to uh, the issue of Dalits and the untouchabilities in South Asia. Uh, Professor Musakoji was not a Burakumin, but Professor Musakoji belonged to, I, I, I you know, it, it, it took, it was after long years of working with him, I realized that he belonged to a very feudal, high caste uh, family in, uh, in Japan. You know, it, took, it, it was like only maybe like uh, 10 years ago after being with him for a long time. Then he started talking to me. We were somewhere in Geneva. And we were talking about the issue of Dalit. And then I, I knew he, was, he did not uh, belong to the Burahu community, but I did not realize that he had such a rich, uh, uh, almost like feudalist background, you know, for him. So, uh, so that is Musakoji, the simplicity, the simple man who, who, who made us respond to contemporary needs. Uh, I would receive at least uh, three emails a week uh, on issues of racism, you know, uh, uh, critical aspects of Imada, uh, critical aspects of the global movement, um, uh, to to drive me to to inspire me uh, when I am when I I can only talk about my own experience as a as a as a, a in leadership today uh, you know in 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 paying homage to him when I was facing a lot of problems in Sri Lanka as a human rights defender Professor Musakoji stood by me because there were efforts from the Sri Lankan government. Uh, contacting uh, the Japanese office to say she's a traitor. Why are you keeping her uh, as a as a chairperson of Imada? Uh, she is serving the tigers. You know her statements in Geneva is uh, is uh, is is more uh, is very unpatriotic. Then it was Professor Musa who ans answered the foreign uh, the ambassador Sri Lankan ambassador in Japan to say we are, and they, they wanted the Imada office in Colombo closed down, right? And for me to be removed uh, from the post. So Professor Musakoji uh, also inspired me there by, by, by taking a firm decision to say, look, uh, Sri Lanka is a Buddhist country and Japan and Sri Lanka has long standing relationships. We selected Sri Lanka because he, his intelligence, you know, I learned from the intelligent manner in which he dealt with the question. It's a Buddhist country. So we are supporting the minority in South Asia. That is the Buddhists are the minority in South Asia in keeping the Asia office there and in supporting another minority lady, Nimaka Fernando, who comes from the Christian minority to speak on behalf of all the minorities, which is a great, uh, which is a great uh, thing for Sri Lanka to host. So after that, all the, all the, uh, antagonisms and all the uh, attacks by the by the Sri Lankan government to 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 make me leave Imada ceased because that was a that, that was his intelligence his wisdom you know uh, which I learned in my work now as a human rights defender dealing with governments dealing with policymakers how do you deal with issues of uh, protecting human rights defenders you have to be also intelligent 
you have to be analytical and you have to be proactive. Uh, he was a researcher, he was an academic, but he was he he always sustained uh, his uh, his research or his analysis in order to sustain and in order to protect social movements in South Asia. And I think uh, today, if there is a large uh, advocacy, UN advocacy uh, uh, in Geneva, all of you spoke about the other issues in Geneva today of recognizing the Dalits, recognizing untouchability globally, uh, we need to also pay homage to Professor Musakoji as well as uh, one of our other staff uh, who, who, who died uh, when, when uh, she died several years ago, Atsuko Tanaka. And I remember Atsuko and Professor Musakoji encouraging me to take up this issue in South Asia. And I think today, uh, the, the Dalit movement, uh, we, we have not been able to celebrate his life yet. Uh, in, in, in South Africa, Professor Musakoji was in the Japanese delegation and how he helped us to raise the issue in the World Conference Against Racism, the issue of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the Dalits and the untouchables. You know, I'm, 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 I don't want to take much time because uh, there are many people who want to speak about him. Uh, for me, I cannot, we lost touch uh, soon after COVID. I knew he was sick and he was in, a, in, in coma. We, I was not, uh, not visiting Japan. Uh, very regularly during the, I mean, since uh, since COVID, I have not uh, visited uh, Tokyo, but uh, you know, it was always a pressure to be there because it was always like uh, the hug, I like meeting my 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 long lost uh, um, comrade, uh, family member. Uh, I miss him in my my work uh, within Imada very much, and I think Imada is also missing him. Uh, that that strong stature. I can only think when somebody was telling, wishing him uh, happiness in heaven. I'm sure in heaven he must be trying to fix his knee. Uh, he wanted to run. He was fixing his knee. I'm sure he's fixing his knee so that he can participate in all the activities that is taking place in heaven. I wish him a very happy uh, happy uh, life uh, wherever he is in the universe. He's there in the universe traveling with us because a spirit like uh, Professor Musakoji will never die. He'll keep us inspiring. And I'm very thankful to him. And I think we were uh, having those memories uh, protecting us, having his memory protecting us. Uh, I miss him very much. Thank you. Jung Wok, may I now request you to uh, link up? Thanks, uh, Francis Lo and uh, Nimarka and uh, Samuel Lee because all those things are already done. So I have a few things to share from my part. My relationship with Mushakoji with Arina. So Arina struggled with the one with the Asia reasonability and the other is the, the cactus has gone. And another is alternative development. So for two missions, we need organic intellectual. So I thought Mushakoji Sang is the our representative and the modeling uh, organic intellectual. So with the, the terminology is some, sometimes very vague, but he showed us what does it truly mean by organic intellectual. So for the for he for the for his working, he did already critically reading the existing text and also critically writing. So his idea on security, common security, and some kind of anti-hegemonical alliance building, many social scientific uh, conceptualization based on his critical thinking and reading. And uh, based on those kind of uh, thinking, he urged us to network. So network, uh, even he urged our digitalized networking very continuously. And also uh, through those things, uh, finally he went to uh, give his hands and heads to 
social movement. So in, deeply engaged in social movement. The character has gone. So I, I, there are many aspects to remember him, but uh, my point, uh, uh, my first point related with the gender. So uh, I met him, Arina, in 1993. But the, my deep impression with him in Beijing Women's Conference, he organized a tra trafficking issue. So for me, as a famous man, organized a very dark side of area. So big victimization of women on trafficking issue was very impressive. So after Beijing Conference, I wrote a, a newspaper column uh, Japanese famous political scientist uh, uh, write, uh, treated on the issue of uh, women trafficking because uh, uh, until then, women's issue are only dealt by women themselves. So uh, for, for eye opening, I, I write uh, uh, that article in Korean newspaper and then he uh, for five years after Beijing conference, he didn't uh, take any rest and uh, with the uh, Seiko Hanochi, uh, he has organized nationwide uh, Japanese women. I remember in Beijing plus five, all over the Japanese uh, nationwide, Japanese, several hundred Japanese women were just before uh, UN uh, building and uh, uh, maybe Nimalka and I did some lectures uh, towards them. So uh, it was deeply impressive. Uh, he, he tried to uh, make this kind of a global channel to make things uh, go further. And then uh, after uh, 2001, after ACC has uh, AC uh, coming to Korea, uh, he has more focus on multiculturalism. So uh, in, there are many things to remember, but uh, my part is more gender related issue. So after that, I will uh, already, some pictures are you know, duplicated, but uh, I will share our memory with these pictures. Next slide. In the 90s, we were in Hong Kong arena, but uh, in early 20s, uh, we were we sh we are run short of our, our budgeting, so it is we have a decentralized arena. So, arena center in Seoul has started. So we we in the early period of uh, 2000 area, so we had body meeting uh, as Francis Law already. <laughs> mentioned we, we have struggled. He always came here with his own payment and uh, uh, how, to, how to make how to make Arena survive. So uh, he did many hands and the heads uh, and hearts to survive. So because of that and also his own um, mission, so we have to start, started the marriage migrant issue. So first to start with, uh, it was it was funded by some Japanese foundation. So we, we get independent from European funding and uh, we started with the marriage migration, uh, how it can be different uh, from the uh, European continental way of migration. That was the uh, theoretical consideration we want to try to uh, go through. So first meeting in Manila and uh, second in Hanoi. <laughs> and then uh, the, the, the ACS has, uh, was supported by uh, some Korea foundation on peace issue. So it was uh, abruptly organized, uh, the peace agenda and the politics war memory, which were very touchy issue, but uh, it was very abruptly organized, but uh, 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 Professor Mushagoji uh, come to us and uh, make a wonderful keynote speech and uh, make uh, things go, go, go. And he himself uh, organized uh, uh, this migrant migration issue. So uh, in Kumi city, Korea southern part of the city, some local organization created their own uh, multicultural community building. 
So he himself even come to Kumi area and met many Vietnamese and the Philippine, Philippine um, uh, migrants. So uh, we were we had a very wonderful time at that moment. So the, the those marriage migration uh, project going on. And so we had a meeting in Taipei in 2011. Those who have participated in Taipei meeting. So uh, many local NGOs were together. So uh, we have discussed uh, how to make a more Asianese way of uh, sending and receiving countries uh, solidarity network building. So the, it was a good memory. And then he also tried to make a project to uh, Asia Pacific Center for uh, a uh, cap project in Tokyo, so on, on this uh, marriage migrant issue. So uh, many of Arena, the, some of our Arena fellows were invited in Tokyo. And then at that, at that moment, we have networking with the Arena fellows in, in Japan. And, uh, and also I was cordially invited by uh, Professor Mushagoji for the, another meeting in um, a, a famous uh, famous touristic zone also Hakone I forgot so and finally in the, in the emergent arena congress meeting in Bangkok though he was he was also give his uh, uh, give his heart and head to, to us and encourage our meeting uh, it is uh, because uh, I was engaged in this and other things when I was asked. At, at, uh, for, for me, I, I thought after my uh, mission in government, I really want to visit Japan to meet Mushakoji to, to share my experience and uh, try to get some wisdom for many things. But abruptly, I heard this this news, but uh, thank you, Kinchi and all others to make this meeting. And I think it is the starting point. Uh, so we can dig out his uh, uh, challenging alternative conceptualization in uh, many, many aspects. So um, then it will greatly help for us to be, for the young generation to be a real, organic intellectuals to, to solve the many complexities in this uh, you know, brutal capitalistic situation. So uh, thank you for, thank you. Thank you very much, Junok. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thank you for reminding us about the, the very gender sensitive character mm -hmm. he was in dealing with trafficking and also the issues of comfort women also. Mm -hmm. So which for us, uh, the women's movement in Asia, we appreciate the role he played. Now I will invite uh, Muto-san. Uh, it's your turn. Yes. Well, um, actually, I miss him greatly. Some uh, vacancy in my life because I wasn't... Uh, working with him so closely or on a daily basis, but his presence was there always somewhere in my mind and in my activity. Um, actually, it was in, I think it was in late seventies that uh, I met him first, but I had known his name uh, before uh, as a sort of a, a young, uh, bright intellectual <laughs> who is, uh, who, whose opinion uh, was to be heard by society, by the state and so on. Because he was, uh, he joined uh, what is known as Shimoda Conference uh, in, in, the, in 60 somewhere, uh, 66 or something, 65. Uh, in, Jap in Japan, we had a big, big surge of uh, people against the security treaty, military treaty with, with the US. 
I'm so uh, Washington was upset and uh, wanted to uh, sort of uh, intervene in the Japanese intellectual uh, stream and so uh, set up a sort of intellectual Japan US intellectual conference. And actually, <laughs> Musha, Musha san was part of it. <laughs> and then uh, uh, in the 70s, uh, a new, new setup, uh, so-called so Trilateral Commission, uh, Japan, US, and Europe uh, should come together to hammer out some measures for the radical movements in the 70s. Uh, so uh, the, the slogan was governability because uh, Europeans felt that the young Germans, young French were not governable any longer. And so they wanted to find out new formula. And Mushasa was part of it. So uh, my first knowledge about him was uh, sort of uh, pro-establishment, uh, sort of uh, young uh, uh, dignitary. Um, it's very interesting because uh, uh, later on, you perhaps you remember that you he he, he was calling himself. <laughs> Uh, half jokingly, I am a double agent. Uh, so, uh, so that a sort of ninja who can uh, who can penetrate anywhere. And so, uh, well, it's it's a very interesting thing that uh, he uh, he established himself. I think rather later as a dedicated uh, sort of intellectual, uh, how can I say, uh, activist, yes, activist, but uh, his, his image, not uh, one of activists, it's a, it's a sort of, Musha is Musha and you can't uh, ascribe his, him to any established category. And such, the, the presence of such a person uh, somewhere near us uh, was something to me to prop me up, to keep me sound. Um, I think it was the uh, late 70s that uh, uh, I met him first. He, I was uh, running. Uh, Park, the Pacific Asia Resource Center, uh, which is now next year celebrating the fifth anniversary, 50th anniversary. Uh, I was uh, sort of a director of that uh, group. And uh, we had uh, uh, sort of uh, an office, a very, very, how can I say, congested uh, uh, place, uh, people coming and going. And then he came, he entered uh, <clears throat> one day with Raji Nikotari. And so my, my first time to, to meet Rajini at the time. And, he, and they sat down, we chatted, and Musha uh, looked around, and it's such a busy environment. And he said, this is what I really wanted to create and, and run. He was from the United Nations University. <laughs> but he, he, he said, well, of course, it's, it's a compliment. But the, uh, actually, he somewhat felt that uh, because uh, the, 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 the park at the time was a sort of concourse of various movements. And people are coming and going, and, and labor movement, women's movement, etc. Cetera, et cetera. All, all those people came together, and he sat there and perhaps found happy. 
uh, found himself happy. Um, he came from uh, uh, from nobility, uh, peerage, uh, meaning uh, sort of uh, uh, close uh, uh, nobles to the emperor. And after Meiji uh, social change, uh, his uh, his uh, uh, grandfather's father and his uh, seniors uh, were leading people in the in the Japanese government. Um, I know some people uh, from from such high uh, nobility status uh, in the movement. Sayonji, who was, uh, whose uh, father was uh, <laughs> sort of uh, the closest uh, advisor to the emperor, Emperor Meiji and Dardo. He was uh, with the anti-nuclear bomb movement. And I was working for anti-nuclear movement headquarters. And we, we mingled. And he, Musha, uh, later became uh, left. Uh, he, he, I think he joined the Communist Party and stayed in Beijing uh, when there was no, no diplomatic relations between Japan and China as a private ambassador or something. Uh, he actually was a, was a quite nonchalant person. Uh, he was wearing slippers instead of shoes, um, dressed in a very, how can I say, uh, rough way. So, uh, there are some some people who who actually uh, divert from the, the the class they you they had belonged to, and uh, choose to be uh, a different person on a different background. And he, I think he's one of those uh, people. But unlike others, uh, I know two of them in addition to him, but. He, Musha was really serious, and he he, he changed himself totally. Uh, and he, so that's he, he he can now say jokingly about his being a double agent. <laughs> so uh, I I think uh, we all miss him. Uh, his mere presence uh, has a great soothing effect. Uh, that he's there in the room, he's a big man, and uh, uh, is prepared. Uh, he has uh, in his talk uh, always some words and some expressions which are unexpected. Uh, he, he, the first uh, phrase he says in his speech is always, how can I say, unsettling. Uh, and people listen to it, people just relax and uh, uh, the mind is open. It's not just a scholar, not just an activist, that Musha Koji, that we have lost, but we remember him and uh, uh, perhaps use him as uh, the, the role model. Uh, and so I, we miss him greatly. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Muto-san.
Uh, I would now invite uh, Mami. Uh, she's next in the list. Yes, this is me. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, I'd like to show you just one uh, picture. I uh, uh, for the I I worked with Professor Musha for the first time in 2015 on the conference of ESD in Japan. I made a presentation about uh, uh, weaving textile arts for the Saori Ori, which I was wearing now. It was for the people with disabilities or the people who were suffering mm -hmm. trauma, traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Of course, I knew Professor Bushakuji. I met him for the first time in 1994 when I was a graduate student and a French, professor, French interpreter. But uh, unfortunately, after that, uh, in 1990s and 2000s, uh, something sad happened to me. I had to quit my career as a scholar because of the uh, because I got me also uh, serious depression. And uh, I met Professor Mishakoji again on Facebook uh, about 10 years ago, 2012 or something like. And uh, we became friends. <laughs> and he was very kind to me and he listened uh, to me very much. And uh, he advised that uh, um, the recovering of people's heart of any kind of violence, war or disaster, tsunami disaster or human trafficking could contribute to peace studies. So that's a re one of the reasons why that I start, I could start again my studies as a scholar. So I thank him very much. Um, the one day I remember that he said in French, you know that we are both French speaker. He said in French, jokingly, uh, connaître, c'est naître ensemble. It means meet somebody or know somebody. It's just like to be born again together. Uh, I think uh, to. The, the chance that I met Professor Mishakoji twice again in the reality and on the Facebook uh, gave me a new new life. So I really thank his life and uh, I really thank you all uh, to share my feeling together. Thank you. I, I should go. <laughs> I have to go back to work. So uh, can I leave now? Thank you very much, Professor Ki uh, Rao Kinti and uh, and all. And uh, I'm gonna meet you again one day <laughs> in uh, another occasion. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mami. Uh, and I think uh, if you have to leave, thank you very much for your words of appreciation and your uh, experience with Professor Musha. Thank you. Thank I will now, much. yeah, thank you very much. I will now invite Mano. Uh, you are next so, in the list to share your few words. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, it has been quite uh, remarkable listening to all of you. Uh, I see a little bit of Musa philosophy, Musa action, Musa perspective in each one of you. And it was wonderful to be part of this program. We are really celebrating the life and work of a global public intellectual, a planetary being, really. You know, um, you know for me, um, he was one of the gurus, uh, like Rajni Kothari, and I can name many others. Uh, in fact, Rajni Kothari was uh, the person who had introduced me to him whenever he used to visit uh, CSDS. Uh, and then I came to know him a little closely when uh, I became part of the UNU project on comparative social transformation to study 
social transformations, uh, revolutions, you know, uh, Mexican, Chinese, uh, uh, Russian, uh, American, Indian, uh, and so on. I mean, Indian freedom struggle and so on. And uh, we met in these conferences in uh, each of these countries very, very closely. Uh, and uh, we didn't meet in, I mean, this didn't take place, this project uh, didn't have a conference in India or US, but in all the other places. Uh, and we produced books uh, out of them. Now, uh, I, I found uh, very interestingly, uh, three things in uh, Musakoji's life and work over the years from the Hiroshima UN disarmament conference to the uh, many conferences that uh, I've seen him part of uh, and his work. For me, actually, Vinod Raina, my friend, Vinod Raina and uh, Rajni Kothari and Giri Dashinka. Uh, Rajni and Giri were part of the Peace and Global Transformation Project, which was a big UNU project, uh, which brought Musa to uh, India very often. Uh, to CSBS very often. Uh, and through them, I became part really of uh, some of the activities. Now, uh, first, uh, he really brought before us an alternative to the dominant school of thought in, uh, in IR, in international relations. For him, it is global transformation studies. Uh, it is not new realism. Uh, and uh, you know, from balance of power and so on, you know, in, in the new realist, you have a new approach to uh, study international relations. Uh, even though you know the universities, even in Japan and India, and of course in the US, are dominated by uh, the new realists, uh, we we have the alternative of Musakoji school of thought and a, a perspective on. Uh, uh, I acquire uh, peace studies, uh, reconceptualization of the world, alternative to hegemony, uh, not only pluralism, uh, you know, to really democratization of the globe, global order, economically, culturally, politically, and demilitarizing the whole system. So that is one. Second, you know, very interesting approach to organization building. Uh, he uh, would discover the space that existed among contrasting situations, contrasting states, competing political organizations, scholars. Uh, and he would use that space to have you know, his approach to peace, disarmament, truth, equality, equality. You know, this, uh, you know, uh, uh, Nimaika's. Uh, uh, Nimaika reminded us this entire campaign against discrimination of all sorts. For him, equality, justice, and peace uh, were the essence of global transformation. Yeah, and equality, justice, and peace for all nations, linguistic groups, religious groups, states. Uh, and just one of us remembered his notion of uh, reconceptualizing state as a non killing. Uh, self-governing political institution uh, of peace and happiness. You know, uh, so that is the second thing, the space. Uh, uh, and the third is, last 10 years or so, he really was a planetary intellect. You know, humans and nature are one. Uh, and that you cannot be, you cannot have this climate change uh, challenge first mm -hmm. and accept and uh, achieve global justice unless you change the, the security notion, the whole notion of common security and so on. I can go on. So in all these uh, respects, you know, Musakoji will continue to inspire us. And we, uh, in the Bandung Network, Bandung Spirit Network, uh, South-South Forum, so many uh, institutions of uh, I think the next uh, is uh, Horichi, Horichi Aoi. Aoi. 
Yes, thank you, Nimalka. And uh, uh, I think uh, I'm quite uh, new to uh, join this uh, arena meeting. And uh, let me just introduce myself. Uh, this is Aoi Horiuchi. I'm uh, from Japan, uh, Japan Energy Center for International Cooperation. And actually, I uh, was first joined the ALENA meeting uh, in 2012 in Bangkok uh, on behalf of Ohashi Masaki. And he introduced me to join this meeting. And uh, at that meeting, uh, the, I met uh, Musha-san for the first time. And also uh, Jung-san and uh, Kinchi-san, yes. And, uh, since um, since then, uh, I had several uh, occasion to work with Musha Sam uh, in Japan and uh, uh, in and in some occasions for the international conference. Let me briefly uh, share some slides uh, for you. This is a, a picture from the Citizens Isshima Summit uh, in 2016 in May, uh, when uh, Japan, the Japanese government hosted a G7 summit. And this is a, a citizens uh, uh, initiative in order to raise uh, voices towards leaders summit. And Musha-san was one of the panelists uh, for the uh, plenary sessions. And he, on behalf of uh, Chubu ESD uh, Center, so as you can see that he, you know, he's more like a, a old gentleman sitting in front of, uh, in the center of the stage. And then we had a press conference to us uh, G7, uh, after the G7 the communique was out and we evaluated according to the uh, thematic issues. And here's a press conference uh, when we had it during the G7 leaders summit. And you can see that Musha Musha is sitting uh, in the front row, uh, holding uh, uh, his rating uh, for the G7 leaders communique. And you can see that he's wearing uh, t-shirts uh, with the STG logo. And coincidentally, uh, the goal he's wearing is uh, about education. You know, it's quite uh, interesting that uh, he's a long-term uh, professor at the several universities. So. And also, he is concerned about the educational uh, politics. This is a picture that we took uh, right after the press conference. And you can see that uh, Hanochi san was also there, uh, and I'm on the left side. So, uh, and two years later, uh, there was a SDGs meeting in Nagoya. And uh, he, uh, Musha san, was presenting uh, his idea about uh, to how to make 21st century as a century for reconcil reconciliation. So this is, uh, I think, for me, the first time to encounter his idea of uh, reconciliation. And uh, for the uh, breakout session, he also made a, a speech, uh, century for reconciliation, how to reflect and overcome the 20th century as race for colonization and nuclear weapons development. So he was uh, so energetic to uh, mobilize uh, the participants to you know, lead uh, this uh, movement, the Century for Reconciliation. And finally, uh, in 2019, uh, June, when the government of Japan hosted a G20 summit uh, in Osaka, there was also a citizen summit in Osaka. And uh, Musha-san was one of the panelists for the breakout sessions. And this time, the theme of this uh, breakout session was uh, also reconciliation and also how to uh, support, uh, how to mutually support, uh, especially for the minorities in Asian regions. So this is the uh, uh, last time that I met him in person. And uh, right after this, uh, the COVID-19 had broke all of our communications, but I'm sure that he was uh, so active even though uh, during the COVID-19 uh, lockdown. And I'm really happy and I'm really uh, fortunate that I could interact with him. Although uh, there were uh, me and uh, his uh, age differences more than half century, 50 years you know, difference. Uh, but he was so gentle and he was so kind to me. He's so generous uh, to 
you know, to introduce the idea and his idea and his studies as well as his, you know, future plans. So I was so fortunate to interact with him. And thank you for inviting me to speak, to speak in this uh, precious occasion. Thank you. Can I invite uh, uh, our dear friend Surichai uh, to say a few words? And I also saw Chandan, uh, Chantana uh, having to take uh, her dad to hospital and she has uh, shared with us what uh, her, her, her few uh, words about Professor Musakoji. Uh, we can read that later, but can I ask uh, Professor Richai to uh, now speak? Thank you, uh, Horichi. Uh, thank you, Nimalka. Uh, thank you, Kinchi, uh, Francis, and uh, Horiuchi san. Yes. Uh, it, it has been uh, listening to all of you, uh, you know. Make make uh, make me feel that uh, he, uh, how great how great Musha uh, uh, Sang has been uh, had been uh, for all of us in all ankles. There are more and more ankles and more depth to it uh, than than uh, we can imagine. Uh, my, I I you know I cannot uh, really uh, feel appreciative enough. For this occasion to be uh, sitting and, and be able to listen to even even key sentences from Muto san uh, already helped me to uh, deepen some some issue that uh, we we could not make clear our, our, our own senses <laughs> i cannot i, I you know uh, i uh, he is very funny person but he's very intellectual and he's very humble. <laughs> he, he's, he is uh, so unique in many ways and he is very global. Uh, that he's the first person who, who, who would say, uh, talk about uh, Tao, Taoism, uh, Confucianism, uh, and, and Christianity and Buddhism in, in, in very uh, unique way of uh, making us understand the, the 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 depth and the the the, the power of of the the, the great sage uh, sages. So I, I, these are the, the first word of of the man whom we we uh, are talking about. But uh, for for me personally and for Chantana certainly, uh, we we through his uh, know to knowing him and through uh, having. Uh, opportunity to work with him in in have have made us feel that uh, we really owe him so much, and the the living inspiration. Uh, I mean, he he's now uh, not been, not not I'm not around here, but I think when we talk like uh, what we are doing today, it it is uh, to make uh, how we can uh, remember him in a very a positive power of our reflection and our own uh, learning and self-improvement uh, of, of humanity uh, that we, we, we all uh, can, can really learn across uh, the borders. Now, please allow me to, to be very unsystematic because uh, I have to say, and I think the time itself is also limiting part. I, uh, some of you may know, I, I, uh, when I first went to Japan, it was 71. It was 71. And 71 for Thailand, uh, uh, my, the university here, the, 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 the rector of the university where I graduated was a, a field marshal. He was a field marshal, a uh, military. And I went to Japan with uh, all kinds of frustration, but uh, in that 71, uh, there were uh, in, in Thai student movement already some kind of uh, anti-Japanese goods boycott movement started in 71. Uh, some of you may, be, may recall and 73, we had the student revolution uh, that we know about October. So I, this uh, is a part that 
met I know uh, me as a, a, a very a young young person to learn a lot about how the 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 power of struggling of 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 engaging uh, among the Japanese uh, uh, pe people whom I, I I found very interesting but very very strong in the determination to fight with the stronger power including the US bases including the, the, the because of the Vietnam War because of all these kind of issues so I through that period I learned a lot outside the university I learned a lot from occasion that I allow me to meet Muto san that allow me to go to the the park <laughs> the the piles of journals the piles of uh, and, and occasion to meet uh, uh, people across the borders who speak of something beyond the the you know the hegemonic uh, political discussion so in some way i i i i i have met him along that that was the first period i would say when i was studying there uh, 75 i just mentioned to you because we have been in solidarity action in japan <laughs> against uh, uh, we had uh, organized a global action against the u.s basis uh, and, and that was uh, uh, when we had uh, we were able to uh, communicate to the all the students organization across in thailand uh, across overseas uh, all the continents have a, a unit united action in one day we had anti-us uh, uh, basis uh, and, and 75 you remember everyone may know recall the the liberation of indo china and that was a, a time uh, so we were able to have be a part of some kind of uh, uh, learning uh, through something beyond national experiences of mine. I think the words transnational did not come to me by by text, but it came to me by 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 this direct action, direct learning, direct uh, encounter with with people who. Uh, there were Japanese friends who came to join us in uh, walk in demonstration against the Japanese uh, by, uh, goods in the uh, boycott movement, uh, who, who support the Japanese goods boycott movement, also support our our struggle for for peace in uh, you know in, in Vietnam and so there I met many friends who so that was the first period of encountering and I did not know Musha Koji Sang at that period well I only heard about him. So uh, before I left Japan, I think there were periods where I were able to listen to him, but in some way I was not very, not quite close to him yet. In the seventies, I I he he he's a bit uh, no. But uh, when I came back to Thailand, I I, I were second phase when I came in in contact and learned with this great uh, uh, human being, this great. A global intellectual and this great, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 teacher <laughs> a friend and friend. He's a teacher and friend. He so so along that I I met him because he was making serious efforts of the kind of effort uh, intellectual projects that that uh, 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 Mohan uh, was talking about the UNU. I think uh, maybe George. Uh, Senero will speak about it also. The the when he became the vice rector of the UNU, he was able to launch very very important and uh, uh, you know uh, intellectual path breaking projects in across uh, I would say across continents and across major countries, and that was. A, a part where I was, uh, a, in, in some way, was a part of of the the bigger project. Where uh, in, in one big project, it was called a, a transnationalization, the state and people's movement movements. And uh, uh, there, I think I I was 
was also able to, to know my Malaysian friend who the country are so close, but never met in intellectual and in movement uh, apart from. So Musha has uh, opened up his uh, all possibilities of new, new interaction of new kind, all transnational. We have gone to uh, a, new, a new level of, of engagement. And I, I, I still, I think this is one of the most uh, among uh, others, uh, most important period where I think uh, I can reiterate the issue of uh, that we highlight here, ARENA. So ARENA was formed as mentioned earlier, but through ARENA, I came into ARENA in, in the, uh, not from the, at the founding, I was not at the founding, but I was in, in the, in, when, when the running of ARENA was going uh, to be uh, more active. And at that time, uh, Roland Surendra uh, and, and uh, the, 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 our Indian friend, and, and he has been based in Hong Kong as um, uh, uh, our kimchi here. And uh, through that, I think uh, we learn more about his intellectual uh, writings and his uh, human uh, touch in, in our meetings. Uh, I, I could not uh, say more, but uh, all these have been very deep in, in our, you know, uh, our really uh, great, uh, it's great to remember, great to, to think about. And it, it is so inspiring uh, when we discuss like this. So I, I really, for ARENA, it has opened up a new frontier of our uh, network, networking and our uh, uh, all kinds of things, including what Nemelka mentioned. Uh, the, I never, had engagement with the Christian. Uh, I never had engagement with, uh, you know, uh, other uh, beliefs. Uh, but uh, I, I, you know, but all, all this uh, uh, urban rural mission. Uh, I met uh, people like OJ Sik from from Korea. Uh, I met uh, he, the, the, the no, many many figures who who we. Uh, we owe him uh, a lifetime of uh, is more important to be a, 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 a human than, than a, a, a national uh, uh, in, 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 in some, several cases. So in that, in that, say, in that way, I, I see, I learn a lot about the, the multi, uh, multi, you know, the, the identity, human identity, identity identification issue in, in the different angles and, and all this. Uh, Musha has been most important also to link the, the how we think about the world without forgetting a small people's lives and, and the sacrifices of, of uh, these uh, people who, who have been all along or maybe unnamed. And all this, uh, I think uh, he, he, by his uh, way of life, his uh, path, he also has I, may I end by saying that even, even uh, when we uh, come to engage with a, a, a global discussion of policy uh, issues, Musha has also shown and be a part of very uh, uh, important uh, uh, you know, uh, enabling uh, figure for us to open up a new new way, new frontier, new angle, new perspective of engage, engaging our, all across. And he never lost this power of inspiration for, for, for many of us, for me especially. And I, I really feel why we are back home, we oftentimes, uh, you know, uh, become inward looking, but uh, Musha has been a, a very warm and very enlightening force for us to be reminded that I think this kind of meeting that we are meeting now can 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 light up our new new efforts again to 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 engage in the next step uh, with our you know I was listening to mommy with great interest and and uh, mommy in fact I met her I met her in that meeting in in this in that. Uh, 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 meeting of ESD presentation by her in, in his, uh, you know, uh, the, the university there in Nagoya, 
where Musha was pushing for a, a human security uh, in uh, global cities network. That was a big project uh, that he engaged uh, several of us, including people from Latin America and, and other continents to, to join him in Africa, etc. So with that global planetary and also very human uh, side of, of everything, uh, he also made us very humble to, to try to look for space to, of learning. And I would like to just to end by, by thanking all of you. Uh, and I really look forward for how we can uh, light up uh, next steps uh, in, in, in whatever way possible and in whatever uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 crossroads we can create uh, with our new generations of friends. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Suri Chai, and send our thanks to also Chantana for the remarks that she put in the chat box. Um, so Ed, are you still here with us? Yeah. Yeah, Can you? it's over to you now, Ed. You look very distinguished today. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the compliment. Uh, well, um, well, first of all, I'd like to thank Kinchi and those who have organized this uh, commemorative event for uh, uh, Musha. Um, let, let me start off uh, in uh, talking about uh, Musha Koji's son. By, uh, by the time when I first heard of him, not having met him, but heard of him, when he was at the United Nations University, he was the vice rector then. Uh, of that, uh, George Asinero will talk uh, more because uh, he was there working with uh, Musha Koji himself. But uh, I'd, I'd just like to state that while he was vice rector of the UN University, he initiated a project on uh, transnationalization, the state and the people. And, uh, and this covered the whole of the South. So for Southeast Asia, it was uh, the Third World Studies Center under Randy David that uh, took charge of, of this, uh, of the Southeast Asian uh, uh, edge of the project. And I was part of that project. And then in uh, South, uh, South Asia, it was uh, Puna, Puna Wignaraja who headed that project. While in Latin America, it was uh, uh, a number of scholars like Pablo Casanova. So it was basically a, a global South type of uh, research looking into all aspects of transnationalization, its relationship with the state and its impact on the people. So it was a very unique project. What made it more unique was that it came from uh, a government uh, supported agency like the United Nations University. And uh, it, it brought together scholars from Southeast Asia, South Asia, and Latin America uh, together to, uh, to do research and to look more deeply at the impact of transnationalization. That was, that was then the term that was used for globalization. But now, now we used to say, we no longer say transnationalization, we say globalization. But that was a pioneering effort on the part of uh, Musha Koji in, uh, in uh, bringing together progressive uh, academics and intellectuals from, from the Global South. Uh, and by the way, it, it was also not called the Global South then. It was still called the Third World, uh, Asia, Latin America, and uh, uh, although Africa was not, uh, was not part of the project. Uh, and then, of course, uh, ARENA. Uh, when I came on board as executive director of ARENA in 1993, or was it 1992? <laughs> I seem to forget now. Uh, Musha was already, of course, part of ARENA, and uh, he was a member of the council of uh, what we then formed uh, a, new, uh, a new structure called the ARENA Council of Fellows. And of course, Musha immediately became part of that. And we held uh, the first uh, conference uh, under my tenure in Manila in uh, October 1993. Musha was there, and uh, what I remember most from that uh, from Musha's participation in the uh, 
in the conference was a speech he gave about uh, about organic intellectuals, about the role of organic intellectuals in in social movements. But uh, but the way he the way he spoke was was very Asian. Uh, a lot of uh, indirect. Uh, ways of looking at things. Um, for example, he, 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 he pointed out that in order for intellectuals in, in Asia to be able to get together and uh, form some kind of a community, we, we had we used the word of digging, digging deep into the ground, digging in deep into the roots of our, uh, of our cultures, of our societies, of our politics, of our history, in order in order to uh, in order to find the commonalities, commonalities that will unite us. That that, that struck me at the time, because uh, the metaphor the metaphor was very was very strong about digging deep into the ground. Uh, I think he was, he also used the word wells, digging deep wells. Um, and then in personal con conversations I had with Musha. When he learned that I was uh, a philosophy major, that is my undergrad, my undergraduate degree was in philosophy. He, um, he, uh, and of course I told him that the philosophy that I was uh, taught in college was basically Western, Western philosophy. There was very little of uh, Asian philosophy, and that's when he went into a discourse on Asian ways of looking at things, including uh, overturning. The Western uh, Western notions of logic. Uh, he says you can actually overturn it, so it becomes illogical for the West Westerners, but still perfectly rational and logical for uh, for Asian societies and Asian thinkers. And I think he used the uh, the example of syllogisms, the uh, modus ponens, modus tollens, and so forth and so on. <laughs> uh, concepts which I have long. Uh, which I have long abandoned actually in my pursuits because I no longer pursued philosophy in my graduate studies. Um, and then of course, uh, you all have said about his invaluable contributions to ARENA. He was not just a member of the Council of Fellows, he was a member of a, a three-person executive committee uh, composed of myself, Kinchi, and, uh, and Musha. And uh, we had to meet quite regularly in uh, in Hong Kong, and he would come. He would come, uh, paying his own way, paying for his hotel, paying for his airfare, uh, and he, he his dedication was really exemplary. His dedication and commitment to to uh, implementing the vision of Arena as a community of progressive scholars that are uh, that are looking into uh, what are the alternatives for Asian peoples. Um, and his, his commitment was consistent um, all throughout, all throughout uh, the days that I was working with ARENA. And of course, even after, as uh, I, I still continue to be active in ARENA. Um, my next encounter with uh, Musha was in 2010, uh, personal encounter, when uh, Tessa, my wife and I were uh, visiting uh, scholars at Kyoto University. And then uh, I got in touch with him, of course, and uh, there was a lecture uh, sponsored by Kyoto University Center for Southeast Asian Studies, where myself, uh, Tessa, and another Filipino scholar, Nick Chongson, were speakers. And I told Musha about it, uh, and I was I was surprised that he came. He came for that lecture all the way from uh, uh, Nagoya. Oh, no, no, no. I, I think he was just outside Tokyo, living outside Tokyo at that time. And he came to my, to my pleasant uh, and happy surprise. But what was most striking was when he entered the room, all the Japanese scholars there were, were I mean, they were amazed. They were in awe uh, that Mishikochi came, well, the, famous, uh, the famous scholar who came from the nobility, uh, came to a lecture. Uh, but by Filipino scholars, and they were so uh, shocked when uh, they all kept they all bowed as low as possible to, to Musha when he entered the room, and they were shocked because I did not bow; I only hugged him, uh, and, I, 
And I think they were offended that I did not give him the proper respect that they had given uh, uh, given Mushakoji. And uh, after that, uh, our Pesa uh, and my stature in uh, in Kyoto University rose because just because uh, we hugged Mushakoji San and Mushakoji came to our came to our lecture. Uh, I, I will end basically by uh, by. Uh, pointing out of, of uh, a, an article, a paper that he wrote that had a very deep impression on me and my work, having to do with uh, doing my doing research on, on territorial disputes in the South China Sea. And, and of course, there are also territorial, territorial disputes in the Northeast, uh, in the Northeast between Japan and China, uh, Senkaku Islands between uh, Korea and and Japan elsewhere. So he wrote a piece which uh, which was entitled Identity Politics in the Developmentalist States of East Asia. And uh, his, his, uh, his main argument there was that uh, there are now shared regional identities and multiple identities not only in Asia, but in, but in the world. Uh, he argued that the present age has given rise to multi-identity, multi-ethnic, and multi-cultural societies. And this is brought about by the massive influx of foreign migrants forming diaspora communities in, in countries, recipient countries or host countries. And this has necessitated the development of multi-level hierarchy of identities among overlapping identity communities. So in, in that paper, Mushakoji rejected the narrow view that national identity is the only legitimate identity. And he foresees the creation of a regional identity that is shared by citizens of various neighboring countries where divergent national identities are, are still recognized and respected. While uh, while he does not specifically refer to territorial disputes, the implications of his argument are quite evident because too often we have notions of a national identity and territorial integrity based on an imagined homogeneous racial stereotype that is being used to escalate inter-societal conflicts. So having a shared regional identity as foreseen by uh, Amusha Koji, will go a long way in easing tensions among nations and facilitate the peaceful resolution of, uh, of, of disputes, including uh, territorial disputes. Uh, so what Mushakoji did in the, in the paper was to call for a coalition of set, both sedentary, and the, uh, these are the, uh, the original uh, citizens, so sedentary as well as migrant citizens. So for both sedentary and migrant citizens to get together because they are after all affected by global economic upheavals. So he, he proposes the creation of a new model of citizenship that is not uh, just based on one national identity, uh, based on multiple identities that are combined according to the principle of subsidiarity and strongly anchored on an eco-cultural local community as a matrix of endogenous, uh, endogenous intellectual uh, creativity. So that, that particular framework I have uh, been using quite a number of times whenever I, I discuss the issue of territorial disputes and whenever uh, national chauvinist uh, uh, sentiments arise with respect to our uh, disputes, for example, for example, with China in the South China Sea, uh, and, and hopefully people will get around to recognizing that national identity, a single national identity, is no longer the way to go. And with that, I would like to end my uh, my uh, tribute to Mushakori San, whom we will all miss terribly. Thank you very much, Ed, for very very nice sharing. Um, can we just move on then to um, uh, Chantana is not here, uh, George? 
you would like to share with us on your experience working with uh, uh, Professor Mushakoji uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, in, as it were, in, uh, in Nagoya. And uh, Nimaraka, after this, can I invite you later on to read also uh, the writings of Shantana in the chat box yeah, for recording purposes. Thank you. Over to you, George. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, yes, I was working with uh, Musha Koji. Uh, I met him in the late 70s. Uh, I was introduced to him by uh, Professor Johan Galtung uh, when I was uh, yet a student uh, in Geneva. And then I continued to work uh, with uh, Musha Koji Sensei uh, in, through the 80s uh, until I left the UNU as he also left the UNU just about the same time uh, when the 90s uh, were just beginning. I would like to speak about uh, Musha Koji Sensei as a man of peace who began his life in a world that was preparing for war. And it's such a sad thing that now he ends his life, his life comes to an end when the world is once again at war. Um, when I uh, met uh, Musha Kochisan, it was, I was uh, very much into the study of peace research, uh, being a student of uh, Professor Johan Galtung at that time. And the UNU uh, uh, organized a, a, a worldwide uh, research program on development, which was really a, a critique of development and uh, an analysis of where development was going, what was wrong, in fact, with development and where should it be going. And at that time that I started working for uh, UNU, I was also doing research uh, at another institute, which was the Max Planck Institute in uh, Germany, uh, which was headed at that time by Dr. Karl Friedrich von Weizsäcker, who was a very good friend of Musha Koji's son. And to me, these two people, two very remarkable people, were like twin brothers, uh, and their lives parallel each other. Uh, Weizsäcker, so I want to speak not just of Musha Kodzi's son, but also for Weizsäcker, uh, because I want to show uh, or, or, or uh, demonstrate a point. Uh, Weizsäcker was uh, the son of a aristocratic family in Germany. His father was a top diplomat in Germany, uh, all the way through, I think, uh, the ascension of Hitler. At the same time that uh, Musha Koji's father was also a top diplomat of, the, of Japan, assigned to Germany, more or less at that time as well. And Musha Koji san began his life uh, in Europe. Uh, he was there in his childhood. And he was there when the world was changing into a very ugly place. Um, Weizsäcker, uh, some of you may know, was a philosopher, uh, was a physicist. He was a protege of uh, Heisenberg. And he was part of a research team that at that time was working on research of the atom bomb. And in mm. fact, it was a race for the development of the atom bomb between Germany and the United States. And Weizsäcker was caught in that very, very difficult position of being a top researcher uh, in a team that was working for an atom bomb. Uh, in fact, it was because he and a group of other you know, very famous physicists were working on it that Einstein in the United States pushed uh, with a letter to President Roosevelt that America should also develop its atom bomb because the Germans were working hard on it and may get there first ahead of the US. So that was the, uh, the, the, the story. 
uh, Weinzika was uh, a few years older than uh, Musha San, I think maybe by 10 years, but he was a very young physicist who really made a name for himself as a top scientist within the uh, Heisenberg uh, Copenhagen group. Now, the thing is, when I met Weizsäcker as the, when he was head of the Max Planck Institute in Starnberg, he had left behind physics. He had left behind uh, research in, this, in, in quantum sciences. And he was working for peace research. He was working, he had a team of researchers who were working on a global study of what was wrong with the world economy very early on in the 70s, when at that time, very few people spoke of an impending crisis. And anybody who spoke about crisis, people would say crisis, what crisis? And yet there he was, and it was in that research group that was often hosted by uh, Max Planck Institute that I got to meet the other uh, scholars of uh, uh, World Systems Theory, uh, Wallerstein, Samir Amin, Andre Gunda Frank, and they were all talking about the crisis. They were far ahead of, this, of their time, obviously, because they, wrote, they published a book in the 1980s about the world crisis. And I remember in one of those uh, sessions that one of them, and I think it was uh, Giovanni Arrighi, who said that in time there will be rightist populist movements coming up because there is always a pattern to a crisis. There's always the economic downturn. There is always the, the disequilibria in capitalist accumulation and there will be political um, spillovers and there will be political reaction and then left and right and center will be in turmoil with each other. Now, uh, all this was happening when Musha San was a young, young boy. As you know, he was born in 1929. So in 1939, he was 10 years old. He told me that uh, at some point, I don't remember when and at what age, but he was still very young, the family returned to Japan. And he found himself quite an oddball in Japan amongst his Japanese classmates because his peers tended to see him as not quite Japanese. He was, of course, as you know, half Japanese, half Belgian or French, Belgian, yes. He grew up speaking French uh, as a child uh, rather than Japanese. Although later on, he mastered several other languages. I saw this for myself when I was working for him as his program officer in Latin America and in Africa, and there I saw how very much at home Musha San felt himself to be, speaking Spanish uh, with the Latin Americans, speaking French with the Francophone Africans, and being very, very cosmopolitan in his culture and his manner of being. He said to me that in his first years in Japan, it was a very, very difficult period for him in fact, as a young child, and this came from his wife, as a young child, he almost like tried to commit suicide a few times uh, by jumping over the window, which was not high enough. I think he made sure of that when he was a little boy. Uh, in any case, he said that life was difficult for him in adjusting to uh, what at that time was a new culture to him. But more severely, it was the war itself that was having a tremendous impact on this young, sensitive boy. And he told me that he was in Tokyo with his family when the bombs fell over Tokyo. And he said his father who was also an aristocrat of uh, uh, being, of course, a diplomat. So parallelism between the Musakoji family and the Weizsäcker family also goes along those lines of 
social origin and culture and status in society and responsibility for their societies that had gone berserk. Mushasan said that when the bombs fell and houses were burning all over around them, his father said, here we stay. And if the bomb comes and falls on our house, here we perish. Well, incredibly enough, they did not perish. Musha San survived the war, as Weizsäcker also survived the war, although Weizsäcker, right after the war, was held under house arrest by the Americans in Cambridge, uh, UK, because he was part of that uh, atomic bomb research group and he was kept there for one year. The important and incredible thing about these two people is that in their, shall we say, after lives or second life uh, after the war, they both became very strong, very ardent, very committed advocates for peace. And they would, I would say their lives, their professional lives and their personal lives were spent in pursuit of peace. War had told them what it meant. The horrors of war were totally impacted on these young men. And they knew that if mankind is to survive, war must be forever the impossible to take place again. Now, that was the period of peace research. Peace research made a tremendous impact in the social sciences. And of course, Musa Koji was one of them, Galtung was another, and there were many others. There was a very strong peace movement. People were afraid of war. People were afraid of the atom bomb. The thing is, now that they are gone, Galtung still around, thank God for that, but Musa Koji is gone and many others, the world is, seems to be no longer afraid of war. Media, the dominant media of the West are rara boys for war. Nobody's talking of de-escalation. Nobody's talking about diplomatic negotiation. Nobody's talking about the horrors of a nuclear war. Instead, people are saying that nuclear war is well, we can survive it. And preparing people to be ready for it. And it is a very sad thing that Musha San died just when the world had changed completely back to the time when he began, when his life began. And I think that we students, followers, disciples of these remarkable men can only carry on their life mission now, now more than ever. For this is really what is called upon us, all of us today. And we follow their mission. We do what we can create a world of peace. Thank you. Um, Nimaka, can I invite you to read the note that Shantana left for us, as well as this note by, um, by Anselmo. Uh, please, for recording purposes. For... Yes, please. Yeah, this is the uh, message left by Shantana. Musha Sensei was a vision of humanity to me, and he still is. I was inspired by his tirelessness, positive thinking, and strong commitment to uphold global peace. I felt strongly his empathy for others, especially people in difficult situations. He will be remembered, and his great spirit will still be my inspiration. I miss him too. And I, I think that's what we have been echoing through this uh, Zoom memorializing of him. Uh, Anselmo says, greeting of peace from Anselmo, Korea to all. I'm happy to be in this important gathering to remember Dr. Musakuji Kinhide. 
like all of you, he was one of role models for me as uh, role model for me as organic activist, intellectual, like Mr. Jay Shikho, whom I also respect. I just want to remind you that he was always an active member of Justice and Peace Commission of Japan as Catholic lay person who is important, uh, Catholic lay person, which is important part of his social identity. He also made big contribution to the democratization and human rights movement in Korea and reconciliation between Korea and Japan. I wish to thank the organizers of this meeting and now he who let me know. Sorry, I have to leave now, so I'll leave a short memo. Here, in solidarity with you and all in shared good memory of Dr. Kim Hedi and Salim Oli. Thank you very much, uh, Nirmalka. Uh, Ed just wants to put an addenda to it uh, to say that Musha was also the president of the IPSA, International Political Science Association, at some point, you know, as, as well as a leader of the yeah, Journal of the Peace Studies Movement and so on. I'd like to perhaps uh, begin to wind down and pass this over then back to Kinji, uh, the principal organizer for this day's very important um, memorial and uh, to remember Musha's contributions and his celebration of his life. Please, over to you, Kinji. Well, thank you. Uh, friends in the arena would fondly call Musha Kodisan with the Indian term of respect as Musha Ji. Uh, I had the honor of working closely with Musha Ji in the arena board after I was recruited into the board in 1993 together with other young members like Vinod, Nimalka, Uvashi, Chantana, Jungok, Melanie and Seiko. Uh, Musha was then 64 years old and I was 37. So you can imagine how inexperienced I was in regional work. And when I was elected to be board chair, I declined as I thought I would not be up to the task. But I was cheated to accept as the board said we would take a rotation of the chair every year and I would just be the first one on the rotation. But it turned out that I was put in the same musical chair for quite some years, which fortunately for me, meant that until the mid-2000s, I had a close working relationship with Mushaji through the twists and turns in Arena's trajectory. So there were so many program meetings when we had deep sharing of our analysis of the state of the world. Mushaji had invited me to Japan to give lectures and he himself did consecutive interpreting of my speech into Japanese. We interacted as equals. And then I learned from his Japanese students that he was such a big name in Japan. Oh, you are friend with Musa Koji-san, they would say. But Musa Ji never carried himself with big airs or self-importance. We would all remember him with his guitar, singing the song, I'm on my way to gender equity land. Just now, Ed mentioned Mushaji's reference to organic intellectuals. He said, organic means they should be decomposable. Uh, Mushaji was a founding member of Global University for Sustainability and had actively participated in the projects. Mushaji always would spur rounds of laughter with his sense of humor and in a gentle manner convey his provocative and incisive thoughts. We could feel his compassion for the underprivileged and his indignation about injustice. And this I came to understand better after I did a long interview with him on his life and thought at the arena meeting in Penang in 2015. And you can find the video on the Global University website. Mushaji's integrity and honesty as a person and a militant has won him great respect. He had been a staunch critic of US and Japanese imperialism, an active member in peace movements, and in the video that was shown at the beginning of this session in 2017, five years ago, he warned against nuclearization, called for total and general disarmament, and called for a pluralistic world order. He urged us to go back to our Asian and non-Asian traditions of non-violence and of having a world based on the rights of all the peoples to live in peace. And this appeal is so much more urgent today. 
So today on his birthday, it is so moving to meet Mushaji's old friends and comrades celebrating his life. Mushaji will be dearly missed and fondly remembered. And thank you, Francis and Nimauke, for co-moderating this tribute to Musa Koji san Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to say it by ending that, uh, you know, I went to study in America in two Ivy League universities, but the best education that I had was actually interacting with all my friends in the ARENA movement, including, you know, Musa Koji Sinsei, you know, all of you all, and uh, this is the best education that I've had. I've learned so much more about my region, my Asia, uh, than I could have from anywhere else. So thank you again very much for coming together with us on this special occasion. Thank you, Kinji, for organizing this. Thank you, everybody, for, you know, uh, being present today. <laughs>